Hi everyone. So last time, uh, I will just make a very quick uh, resume of what we have seen last time. So last time we said that uh, the trading is very personal. So remember, doesn't matter uh, what uh, we're going to teach you. Doesn't matter what you can read on the internet. Doesn't matter what someone tells you. It can work for him. Maybe it doesn't work for you because uh, if, if things uh, trading, sorry, uh, implies uh, psychology, personality. So you should go and use a strategy that fits your personality and not a strategy that fits someone else's personality. Then we have uh, uh, spoken that a trader actually, it's a four person at the same time. It's a, strateg a strategist, so it's someone who knows the market and who knows which strategy to use in which uh, market because there is uh, several market conditions and for each market condition there is a strategy which is better, less risky or whatever actually. So uh, then you have the analyst. So the analyst helps the uh, strategist by uh, analyzing, an, an, analyzing the market and trying to recognize the market condition. So if it's a range, he recognizes the range and then he knows that we have to apply a trading range strategy. Then we have the trader. So when the analyst has recognized the market condition, when we know which strategy we have to apply, then we have to apply the strategy. It means we have to enter, we have to exit the market, we have to manage the trade, we have to manage our position. And then we have the uh, uh, manager, which is kind of someone who is overseeing a bit everything. So as example, when you take a trade and you work in a bank or in a fund, you have always someone who is on your back checking if you have done a good job, if you have taken the good risk and so on. So this is called uh, the management. So it's risk management and capital management. So it was just an introduction last week. Uh, this week we're gonna, uh, we have decided to cut into two the analyst part because there is quite a lot of things to, to, to discover. So today we're gonna speak about market conditions, how to spot them, how to recognize them. Of course, it's only two hours, so it will absolutely not be enough. Uh, but if you want to know more, uh, you can go to the YouTube channel of uh, DM Trading Bulgaria, and uh, you have the video of Ilian and Valo uh, that they post, I think, two, three videos per week. We, we, you have analysis there, so everything that we're gonna mention today, you will be able to see it in videos and in trades actually that they are taking following what you're going to learn today. Next week we're going to go a bit more into detail and to uh, uh, try to understand how, uh, which tools we can use to help uh, the analyst uh, work uh, and then uh, we're going to see how we take trade and how to manage the risk. Uh, so our sponsor is Admiral Markets, it's a broker which is uh, located uh, in several places around the world. Uh, and what is good actually with them is that, as you see here, they have Australian uh, regulation. It means that, uh, maybe you don't know, but since this summer there is a regulation against uh, uh, CFD and uh, brokerage in Europe to limit uh, the leverage. So now if you don't have 10, uh, 20, sorry, uh, 10 or 20,000 euro in your uh, trading account, you can't really make big trades. So let's say it's uh, less interesting when you have two, three, five hundred euro to trade. But various countries like Switzerland, Australia, and other countries around the world that didn't apply this uh, stupid regulation. So uh, Armada is one of the brokers, Admiral is one of the brokers, where you can open an account with another jurisdiction. The other sponsorship is Jarvis. Uh, it's an exchange where you will be able to trade any assets ranging from cryptocurrencies to stocks, but also uh, derivatives uh, like a CFD, Forex, and this kind of thing. And uh, we will start. So today we are here, analyze the market. And uh, I will uh, assume that you are all beginners and you have never seen a trading chart uh, of in, your, in your life. So uh, we're gonna start with basics. So the lesson today will be divided into, into two. Uh, introduction, and then we're gonna see uh, uh, how we can apply, uh, apply some of the thing. So uh, a, a, a trading chart always looks like the same you have here the time scale and here the price scale. So I think everybody is following. Uh, so how it works. You have uh, at each hour, so at 9, 10, 13, and so on and so on, you have a price. 
So as example, at 9, the price were at 2 euro. Uh, and at uh, 1 p.m., the price is at 8 euro. So then when you link all of those different prices, you got a curve. So what you have to understand is that every time you look at a curve of a stocks or forex or whatever, each point is just a situation at this time. So at 11, we were at 6 euro. We call uh, the difference between the time, the period. So here it's a chart which has one period equaling to 60 minutes. So we will say this is a one hour chart. So whenever you're gonna hear or read someone saying, oh, on my four hour chart or on my daily chart, it just means that each point is separated by one for the four hour or one day. The same chart, but with a 30 minutes period. So of course you have twice more points because now you have one price every 30 minutes. So it will look like this. The first thing that we can notice is that because we have more points, we have also more details. As example here, I don't know, I have no clue uh, about what happened between 10 and 11. Here I know that between 10 and 11, actually, the market has been to 7 euro, and after it went down. It means that uh, the more precise uh, you want to go, and the more points uh, and the more information you have. So this is exactly the same movement. But here, each point is separated by one minute, while here, each point is separated by four hours. So here I, here I have, let's say, a general overview of the movement, and here I have the movement in a very, very detailed way. So the first thing that you have to know when you analyze a, a market, you always, always, always have to use at least two or three different time frames. So Four hour time frame, 15 minutes, one minute, doesn't matter actually the time frame you're gonna use. There are some rules to respect. But when you open, like tonight, if you go and by, and by uh, curiosity, you open a chart, don't, do not open one chart. Open at least two or three charts of the same asset, but using a different time frame. Uh, then you have different way to represent those charts. So the more basic, it was the one I just showed you, Every point is separated by four hours, and you link every point, so you're going to end up to have curves. So basically, it looks like that. But I don't know if you have already seen a market uh, a trading chart, but it doesn't really look like that. Most of the time, it looks like that or like that. This is what we call bar chart or candlestick. So how we can build a candlestick and why we have to use candlestick. So let's say that this is a movement. So it's going down, and let's say that uh, here it's nine hour, uh, it's nine a.m. in the morning, and here it's one p.m. the afternoon. So there is four hours dividing my opening from my closing, and then I just look at what is the highest point during those four hours and what is the lowest point during those four hours, and then I can draw my candlestick. So the body of the candlestick, it's the difference between the open and the close. Most of the time, when there is a, a movement, I mean, the close is lower than the opening, we use a red uh, body, and of course, we use a green one when it's going upper. Then you have the shadow, I mean, everybody has different words for that, so we don't really care, but I like to call them the shadow of the body. So the highest point of the period is here, and the lowest is here. So those two representations show the same thing. It shows what happened during four hours. But here you have a lot of information that are maybe not necessarily. Here you have just, you know where we were at nine, where we are now at one. You know what happened during those four hours, where we have been, uh, uh, the highest and the lowest. Of course, you have different kind of uh, candlestick. So as I'm in this, mov in this movement, sorry, is represented by this candlestick. This one, as you see, sometimes you don't have a lowest uh, shadow uh, because actually the open is exactly the same price as the lowest of the period. It can happen actually. Uh, and you have also candlestick that could look like weird. So as, a, as example here, you have a huge movement going down, then a huge movement going up, and then you got this candlestick. So candlestick has been invented uh, in Japan. I, I don't know when. Uh, and uh, as you know, a lot of Japanese uh, uh, 
uh, legend and so on, they like to give, uh, not scientific, but a very cool name. So, Ilian will uh, explain you some of the cool names that the Japanese has given to uh, candlestick formation, because when you have few candlesticks nearby, sometimes they make formation. Uh, so, as example, they call this one the woman with a baby on her back, because it's like someone carrying a baby. If it, will, if it would have been the opposite, uh, they call it the woman which is, uh, who is pregnant. Uh, then you have some British guy who said, okay, but how to say, oh, the Apple stock uh, has a configuration with a baby on her back. So we have invented uh, more, let's say, straightforward uh, word and configuration that Ilian will uh, overview now. Maybe you need uh, this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you uh, for coming today uh, due to the weather. And uh, second, that you waited for 40 minutes uh, because of the electricity issues. Uh, however, let's continue with the uh, different candlestick formations. Pascal already told you what a candle is. And uh, now I would like to uh, give you a little bit more information on how you can read a chart and uh, predict what is going to happen on the market using only uh, candlesticks as a price action indication. Of course, this is uh, not enough. You need to have other uh, confirmation sources for that, but it's a good start. I tend to use them a lot. So first, I'm going to start with engulfing. What uh, the engulfing uh, represents, it is basically uh, a candle that is of the opposite uh, color, or in this case, this candle is bearish. Uh, if, for those of you who don't know what bearish is, I'll just uh, say a few words about that. Uh, the, this means that the sellers were stronger than the buyers during that uh, period. For example, if this period is four hours, uh, the sellers were stronger than the buyers, and they pushed the price down, forming this bearish candle. Uh, the bullish candle is usually green, and it means that the buyers were stronger in that uh, time frame period and pushed the price up. Uh, and engulfing. A quick uh, question. Usually, yeah. Do, do, try to guess why we call them bearish and bullish. Uh, you know it. So, okay, a beer. What represents a beer? What represents a beer? No, a, be a, be a bear. A bear. The animal, Ours. yeah, ours. So, wh what does a bear? I mean, uh, when a bear wants to attack you, what he's doing? No, no, but make the move. Be ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. So I go from down to below. From opposite. Yeah. Up to the down end. And uh, and a bull. Okay, that, that as simply as that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and also about the Japanese uh, candlesticks. I think they were inv invented to count rice uh, between rice uh, traders or something yeah, like that. As far as I remember, it wasn't in Japan at that time though. Uh, so, however, the engulfing is basically um, the next candle uh, is opposite than the previous one and uh, its body fully engulfs uh, the previous candle. So, in this example, we have a bearish engulfing. And as you can see, uh, we are having a bullish momentum. So the price is going up for several candles. And then uh, the sellers are getting stronger. Uh, they're pushing the price down and they're forming this huge red candle which engulfs the previous one. Uh, other than that, we also have a bullish engulfing, which is actually the same. I mean, not the same, but the opposite. We are having a bearish momentum, so sellers are in control over the market, but then uh, due to uh, some external factors, for example, uh, the sellers decide to leave the market and the buyers join the market, so they push the price back up and the next candle, the bullish candle, engulfs the previous bearish candle. Now on the next slide, uh, I want to show you what actually happens in uh, that candle itself. So you only see the candle that engulfs, but inside of it there is a huge movement. You can see how 
Uh, this is the first candle that uh, will be engulfed. And if we move further, you can see that the points are getting higher, so the price is uh, in increasing. And they continue to get higher and higher. So this is basically this candle formed by three other candles. You are, uh, Pascal already told you about uh, time frames. So this is uh, representations, for example, if this candle is a four hour candle, uh, it's not the perfect representation, but let's say those are one hour candles in this case. Uh, Pascal, yeah. if you want to add something so here, because... Here's the, the thing is important to understand, because if someone tell you an, ang an angle thing or uh, a woman with a baby on the back, because it's, it's this, uh, you have the woman and you have the baby, uh, it means that the market is making a, a reverse. Uh, you, could, you could ask, okay, why? I mean, it's the first thing, like if someone tell you, okay, this means that it's going, it's making a reverse, your first question has to always be, okay, why? If someone tell you something, ask him why. If he can't reply, that means it's bullshit. If he tell you it's the theory, no. So this is the explanation why. So the red candle, so first look at the, the, the black uh, curves. So the black curves, it's the market, move, the brute, uh, you know, the brute movement. And then we have uh, uh, resumed this uh, movement with three candles. And as you can see, you have a small red, and then you have a big green. And the big green is uh, eating the red one. And this is the angle thing. And what is happening in the market, as you can see, you had before a, a small red movement, and then soon you have a big green movement. So this movement is represented by this structure of, of, of candle. So every time you open a chart and you see an angle fring uh, pattern or a baby on the back of a lady, think that uh, it means exactly this. This is what happened in the market because candle stick are the resume of what is happening and what we can see. And, he, and this big candle, it's a resume of those three candles also. Uh, as Pascal said, uh, most of the times, uh, the engulfing as a formation changes the direction of the market. Of course, this is not 100%. Uh, it happens sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. That's why, as I said in the beginning, you need to have at least one or two more confirmations uh, before uh, trying to open a position. You cannot rely only on engulfings. Uh, here is an example of a bullish engulfing. You can see uh, for how long this is uh, a DH4 chart, although it's uh, not written anywhere, I remember it, but uh, you can see how, uh, for how long period uh, we were having a uh, downtrend, and we're gonna talk about uh, trends a bit later in this presentation, but um, downward movement of the price, so the price was falling, and then we can see here uh, this engulfing, and then the price changes direction for quite some time. Now, I tend to use engulfing uh, as a sign to enter. Of course, I use other uh, things, not only that, but uh, price action is uh, one of the easiest way to understand the market and to uh, trade it profitably, at least for me. Uh, again, another example with bearish engulfing. Again, the four-hour chart, you can see uh, what a strong upward movement we are having here. Uh, when after that the engulfing happens, something changes with the market. Uh, it might be caused by external factors, but uh, the participants on the market change their uh, perspective, their view of that uh, market, and they start uh, selling the uh, pair, if we are talking about Forex, of course. Moving on to another formation, morning and shooting stars. Uh, again, those formations tend to uh, reverse the market movement. Uh, although engulfing is, uh, how to say, you can see it uh, quite often on the market, morning and shooting stars are more rare, rarely seen, but uh, they have a very strong impact on the market overall. Uh, I want to show you how they look like. So the shooting star uh, is a candle that has a very small body, as you can see, a very strong 
uh, shadow, or uh, some people like to call it, call it tail, on the top, and a small one on the bottom. Uh, what this means, we were having an upward, strong upward movement here uh, before the shooting star happened. And here, the buyers uh, continued to push the price up, but uh, due to some reason, they failed. And as you can see, this basically represents that uh, the buyers on uh, the candle opened here, where the previous candle closed. Uh, the candle, uh, the price went further up until here, and then the bears attacked from the top and pushed the price down, forming this uh, red candle, which is called a shooting star. Usually after it, uh, it is followed by another strong uh, bearish candle or red candle, and uh, that defines a certain point in the market from where it is uh, ready to reverse the movement. Now, the uh, morning star is the opposite of that. We have a reverse in a bearish market. Again, uh, we are having a downward movement. The, shooting, uh, the morning star sorry, forms. Uh, again, a very small body of the candle, a huge uh, shadow. This, uh, you can see the difference that here the shadow is on top and here again it's on top. But uh, this represents that the sellers are basically uh, trying their best to continue this downward, move, downward movement. And then, as you can see, usually uh, this formation is followed by a strong uh, bullish candle, st uh, strong green candle, which indicates that um, the sellers has uh, have already, uh, how to say it, capitulated. Huh? Извинявам се за българския, просто не се сещам думата на английски. И and uh, the buyers are in control of the market once again. Now, uh, I think Pascal would like to explain it here in further details of the movement inside of those uh, candles, basically. Yes, yeah, so, so as you can see here, you have a movement going down. Then, so you have this big red candle that represents this down movement. Then here you have an hesitation in the market. It's important to understand that uh, a morning or shooting stars, or as Japanese said, uh, the stars of the morning or the stars of the evening, uh, because uh, the stars uh, uh, bring the night and you know Japanese stuff. Uh, so you have an hesitation. And as you see here, the market really hesitated. It's when the market hesitates, it doesn't mean that it doesn't know where to go. It means that there is two, uh, you know, there is the buyers and the sellers that are really uh, fighting. So this is why, in the middle, it's always a candle, as uh, uh, Ilian said, uh, with uh, a very small body. Okay, here it doesn't look a small body, and with very big uh, shadow or tail, because you have to understand that it's psychology. You go down, then you have an hesitation, and finally there is one one camp, so the buyer who are winning. So this is why a morning and a shooting stars symbolize the reverse of a market. So again. When you look at the chart, try to spot this. Try to, to train yourself. It doesn't come like that, of course. Hein? It really requires few practices. But mind that when you see a shooting star or a morning star, it means exactly that there was a sell movement, then hesitation, and finally the buyer have won, or of course the opposite. And again, here you have one candle which represents the free of our candle, and just for your information, we call this candle a hammer. And a hammer, it means that the market has opened, uh, because you remember, uh, the body shows the open and the close. So it means that at the beginning we were here, so you see it's, it's where we are there on the left. Then we went below, and then we went up. So it means that a f uh, uh, if you look at a four hour chart, if in a four hour chart you see a hammer, and sometimes it means that in a one hour chart, you have a morning star. And if you look at a 15 minute chart, then you're gonna see all those movements. So try to make the connection between the three different time frame. Uh, yes? No, yes. <laughs> no. no. So if you're looking at the smaller the time frame is, 
would it mean that it's less chance that its significance is so big because the movements are much smaller? As in, if this appears in a four-hour chart, then you're likely to see a, a bigger drop than if it's in a 15-minute chart? Is that correct, or am I completely wrong? If I'm understanding the question. Uh, so, I don't know if I understand the question, but uh, if I understand it this way, uh, when you see a candle on daily, it is way stronger than when you see a candle on in one minute. Because a, a morning star in one minute, it just means that there was a drop of maybe two, three minutes. Then there is, a, no, even less actually, there is yeah, two, three minutes drop. Then during one minute, there is a market hesitation. So you have one candle of one minute. Then the minute after, it goes up. That's all. When you have it on daily, it means that during the full days before, it was going down. Then f during one full day, you have hesitation. And then the day after, during one full day, you have a, a market up. So the higher you look at, and the better it is. If I understand the question, OK. OK, and we are going to continue. Uh, first, uh, some examples of a shooting star. Uh, again, this is H4 chart, uh, for our chart. You can see the reverse in the uh, so-called trend or the movement of the price. Uh, it can be a very, very strong uh, candlestick formation, uh, especially, as Pascal said, if you, look, if you find it on higher time frames, for example, four hours, daily, uh, weekly time frame, monthly time frame. The higher the time frame, the stronger the sign of it is. I have a question. Yeah. How many shooting star and morning star you can spot on this chart? Because this, uh, it's a trap that every marketer will, will try to, to, to do on internet. So they will tell you, oh look, with the morning star or the shooting star, you can predict the full uh, downtrend. So they will try to sell you lessons, they will try to sell you services, they will try to sell you a broker, telling you, see, sí, uh, trading is easy. This is how we scam people. It's super easy. You don't know anything, and Ilian just tell you, oh, look, if you follow what I just told you, you can break the movement. Okay, now let's see behind the scene. How many morning shooting stars you can see on this chart? I see just one, because uh, uh, that is the one on the top, because the body of the next candle is very big, and that's what... There is two already. Uh, I was talking about only shooting. No, no, no just, sorry. okay, so how many shooting and morning stars you can see on this chart? Okay, there is more than two. How many? How many do you see? You can give a number by hazard. Nobody will know that you did it. You know. uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, how many worked? Nine. Maybe. How many worked? One. One very strong, and two, three, or two worked, but a little bit. And there, there was only one that we, we, we could say this one barely work after it's going down, you know, you have a one, two, three. This one doesn't work, this one doesn't work, this one works, of course. Uh, here you have the angle frink that works. So uh, before, Ilian told you that it's something that he's using, but he also told you something very important. You can't use only that. So maybe if you want to tell a few words about it. Like, don't be fooled by one signal. Uh, yeah, as I continue to remind that to everyone uh, with whom I speak about trading and especially candlestick formation, is that you cannot use them as a only as an only sign out to enter the market or to trade the market. You need to have um, other things into consideration before uh, opening any trades because, for example, uh, we are going to talk about uh, support and resistance levels in this uh, presentation. I'm going to just mention them here, but for example, this uh, formation is a lot stronger if it's happening on a certain level on the, on the chart. So if, if we have a level here, just above uh, that formation, that means that this is a lot strong, stronger sino than for example, this. And uh, also here, we don't have a reverse on the next candle, so I wouldn't count it. So don't get fooled. 